Welcome to Kids Academy. Hey, it's Coach Rob from Kids Academy, and today we're going to learn about the most important checkmating pattern in all of chess. Now, I can't tell you how many games I have won using this strategy, and now I'm about to teach it to you. Some people call this the ladder checkmate or the monkey bar checkmate because as you see here, we have these two rooks. And I want you to think about what it looks like as you climb the ladder, specifically what your hands are doing as you're climbing the ladder, one rung at a time. Or you can think about it if you play on the playground and there's a monkey bar, you kind of swing across the playground on the monkey bars one hand at a time. Now, as you visualize your hands moving up the ladder or across the monkey bars, I want you to keep that visual in your mind as we talk about these two rooks. Now, in order to do the two rook checkmate or the monkey bar checkmate, our two rooks will work as a team to push the black king to the edge of the board. There are four edges, right? The top, a bottom, and two sides, four edges. We're going to push the black king in this example all the way up to the top. So we're going to push him up to d8, and we're going to do that so we're going to push him up to the 8th rank, and we're going to do that using our two rooks as a team to slowly start cutting away the ranks one by one. And the way we move our rooks will resemble the way our hands move as we climb the ladder. So in this example, this rook on b3 is on top. Think about on the ladder, your hand is on top. Now it's time for your other hand or your other rook to move. It would take a leap up to the next rung. Same thing in chess. This rook on b3 is controlling the entire third rank. It's kind of making an invisible line saying this king cannot cross into these squares. The rook is controlling them, sort of making a force field. After the move, rook a4 climbing the ladder or climbing the monkey bars, we now have a situation where this rook on b3 controls the entire third rank. This rook on a4 controls the entire fourth rank. And if we're talking about CPR now, thinking about CPR, the king has no choice but to go to one of these three squares, either e5, f5, or g5. And all three of those squares are one step closer to the top. After the king moves up, we now look at our two rooks and think about our hands on the ladder. It's now the bottom hand or the bottom rook's turn to climb. And this rook would go from b3 to b5, check. And we're repeating the pattern. Once again, this king has to get out of check. You can never leave your king in danger. As we know from earlier videos, it's just not an option. So the king has to run away again. He is now on the sixth rank and we'll take this rook, play from rook a4, rook a6, check. Remember, we now have our invisible line, our force field. And this king is now doing the active work of attacking the sixth rank and checking the king, the king goes up. What should white play here? Excuse me. <clears throat> what should white play here? Well, we see this rook is on the bottom, and every move the rook switch jobs. So last turn, this rook was attacking the king and controlling the sixth rank. Now this rook is acting as the force field, and it's time for this rook on b5 to go to b7, check. The king has no choice. He has to go up. He's on his eighth rank. He's on his final safe row. And it's checkmate in one for white. What move should white play for checkmate? Well, let's look at these one by one. Some people might suggest rook b8. And I would say a couple things to that. Number one, this rook just moved to b7. Let's go back. This rook just moved to b7. Think about your hands on the ladder. Would the hand on top take another stretch, another step forward for the next rung? No, it would be the bottom rook's turn. So it's not even this rook's turn to move. If we try rook b8, the king can escape, can squeak out and get back on the seventh rank because we've moved our force field rook away. So it's not rook b8. Some people might suggest, okay, this rook is on the bottom. Thinking about our ladder, it's that rook's turn to move, the rook on a6. How about we try rook e6 check? Well, let's look at this and we'll use our CPR. This will be good CPR practice. Can black capture, protect, or run away? Let's see. No way to capture, it's too far. 
can't protect, no pieces to block with, but how about a runaway? The king can go to f8 or to d8, and the game continues. The problem with checking from the bottom is that this rook only attacks one square on the entire eighth row. However, if we check from the side and use the same strategy that I've been showing you and play rook to a8 instead, well, now we control every square on the eighth rank. And this rook on b7 controls every square on the seventh rank. There is no way out, checkmate. What's interesting about the two rook checkmate or the latter checkmate, you can also do this with a queen and a rook or even two queens, it's the same idea. Since a queen can move like a rook, the queen can help cut off these rank by rank. Now, sometimes your opponent will be a little bit clever, and instead of going directly back, he or she will move diagonally. And what will happen if we repeat this process and the keep king keeps going diagonally, it's getting closer and closer to our rooks? Well, now we have a bit of a problem. If we followed our strategy and played rook b7 check, black has a very nice move. They'll use CPR and just capture us. So what should we do as white when the king gets close to our rooks and prevents our strategy of doing the ladder checkmate, the monkey bar checkmate? We can try running away, but that's kind of um, counterintuitive. It goes against our plan of strategy of forcing the king to the eighth rank. <clears throat> we can try protecting our rooks, but now the rooks can't work as a team. They can't kind of jump over each other and climb the ladder because they hit each other, they're on the same file. So what I like to do, whenever the king gets close to my rooks, I simply bring my rooks to the other side of the board. I'll play rook h5 here. And because rooks are so fast, they can go all the way across the board in a single move. The black king, not so much. He moves one step at a time, attacking our rook, so I want you to think about bringing this rook over to the other side of the board. Should this rook go to g6 or to h6? If we want to do our monkey bar strategy just from the other side of the board, what would be the best square for that rook? Well, the answer is g6. The problem with h6 is once again, our two rooks cannot work as a team. They bump into each other. But if we play the move rook g6, the black king will try to chase us, but remember, very slow, he's an old man, only going one square at a time, and we'll continue with rook h7 check. The king goes diagonally trying to get our rooks, but he's too slow, rook g8 mate. The final thing I wanna show you, we've been doing this on the ranks. These rooks can also work on the files, pushing the king either to the left or the right of the board. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is that these two rooks can still work as a team and do the same strategy even from opposite sides of the board. They don't have to be adjacent to each other to do the ladder checkmate. They can actually make the force field and control the rank the king is on even from opposite sides. So what would white play here? Recognize which rook is creating the force field and which rook needs to take away the fifth rank if we wanna push the king up to the top to the eighth rank of the board. Well, we see this rook on h4 is making the force field, so white should play rook a5 check. The king has no choice. These squares are under the rook, rook's control on h4. These squares are controlled by the rook on a5. The king goes up, and we repeat. Check. The rooks are switching jobs. It's now this rook's turn to do the attack. Check. This rook is now creating the force field, and rook h8 mate. So the two rook checkmate happens all the time in chess. You'll usually get a material advantage. You'll have an extra piece or two, and then you can use your two rooks to capture the remaining black pieces or white pieces, and then coordinate your two rooks so they can work as a team to climb the ladder and force the king to the edge of the board. In this game, in all these examples, we force the king to the top, to the eighth rank. It works the same if you're gonna push the king to the first rank or push the king to the A file or even the H file. And remember, you don't necessarily need two rooks to do this. A queen and a rook can perform the same mating pattern and so can two queens. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.